Before we get started, I want to say thank you for clicking on this video, especially if you saw the length of it. I did do some things to make that a little less intense for you guys. In the description, there will be a whole bunch of timestamps, so if you don't really want to sit through the entire thing, you can just look for a certain topic you're interested in. Also, I'm going to save you guys potentially years of your life. I've been doing this for about a year now. If you go on YouTube and you click the little gear, you can change the playback speed and increase it up to two times. So if you put it on that setting, it would effectively make the 60 minute video Video, a 30 minute video. We did this interview live, so a lot of the questions were from the viewers themselves, along with some of my own personal questions. If you have any cool ideas or questions about Unturned, the forums are a good place for that. And finally, it wouldn't be a overdone intro without a little bit of YouTuber self-promotion. So if you do enjoy this video and find it helpful, please be sure to leave a like and or share it with someone you think would get something out of it. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good, how about you? Pretty good. Okay, so this is uh, Nelson Sexton, the creator of Unturned. He's working on Unturned 2. You want me just to get right into the questions or? Uh, sure. Okay, so I saw that the last devlog, there was like a lapse for like three months. Was that finishing up Unturned 3.0 or was that working on pretty much just like the gun beta? Uh, let's see. I think there were a few 3.0 updates in there. Um, there were some server problems I wanted to get sorted out in 3. Like um, I ended up moving all the voice data from being peer-to-peer -to, -peer to going through the dedicated server. Uh, so there were a few things like that. I also ended up rewriting a lot of the stuff there. The item code is a lot more modular now. It, it was longer than I thought it would be, that's for sure. But I'm, I'm definitely I'm glad I took the time to do those rewrites because the item code is a lot nicer now, along with a few other things behind the scenes that are a lot nicer. Okay. Um, I saw in the devlog that you said there was pretty much like one more 3.0 update and then you'd be pretty much done with 3.0. Is that the case, or do you think there would still be more updates to come for 3? Oh, uh, that must have been a miscommunication on my part. It was I was saying that I was going to do a 3.0 update at the start of this week. So there was a 3.0 update at the start of this week that had some important fixes and some uh, additions for mod developers, and then I spent the rest of the week working on 4. Okay. You also said that after the next, it was either this one or next one, but after that you would be able to do like weekly devlogs or something like that? Yeah, I'm definitely trying to go towards uh, the early 3.0 style, like every Friday there's an update. Mm. Uh, I was aiming for that this past week, but I decided to uh, try and build together the vehicle and more gun changes for next Friday. Mm. So I got quite a bit of stuff done this week. My goal for today is to get the vehicle rig updated to the new character because um, I ended up redoing the character after the last vehicle demo. Mm. Uh, so I'll redo all those animations, then I'll redo a bunch of the Eagle Fire stuff. And my hope is that that'll be updated on next Friday. So it'll be available for everyone who has demo access right now. Oh, okay. So you're going to like merge the two together essentially, or like the gun beta uh, oh. and the vehicle? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I might bring back that map. I might just make a new map or I might stick cards on the firing range. Uh, I'm not sure quite yet. <laughs> just drive through a gun range. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's a fast target. Okay. Okay. Um, I also saw that, like you were saying, that people rather sooner or later would be able to apply for the beta through uh, 3.0. Do you think that would be something that would happen soon, or is that still like a while out? So there's a few factors there. I want it to be a little bit more polished, and I think as the betas get more polished, I'll be more comfortable with letting more players in. I think it's I don't want it to be like um, you know something that's half baked and then anyone can go play it. And what I did so far is I set up a system where um, there'll basically be a server on my end that I'll do some profile verification and then add the game to your Steam account. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need the uh, I just need the package set up on Valve's end for that. And then my plan is to slowly uh, decrease the requirements for that. So my first thoughts is that if you have the experience beret or the debuggers beret or a few other items, uh, then you'll be able to just add it, add the game to your account. And then you'll get access to all these weekly updates and everything. And then I'll probably decrease the requirements as it gets a little bit better. But uh, before I do that, I, there's a few more features I want to get in. Like uh, right now you can't loot people's corpses because I'm moving that to a separate screen. Uh, so there's a few other what I think are important features that I want to get done first. Do you think it'll be like a few more months until that happens? Or is it not that complicated of a process just to like slap it together? Mm, I can definitely see see having the uh, the initial expansion in the next month or two um, I definitely think it's gonna be more than a few months before it's widely expanded though okay 
Okay. Uh, I also saw you were experimenting with Blast Zone. Do you think there would be more official game modes like Arena, Deathmatch, that kind of thing? Or would it just be more as like a server owner or like a modders like deal to do that? I think uh, I, I definitely want to make it possible for modders to be able to make as many different modes or custom anything that, that they like. And so I'm trying to uh, ensure that all those features are like the same features I use so that everything is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I'll probably make a few more modes uh, to, to ensure that as many things are possible as can be. I think definitely horde mode is going to be one of the next things. Okay. Uh, the main thing for that is I want to add more AI enemies. I mean, yeah. uh, probably the first thing to be added to the beta will be like the classic unturned zombie. And mm -hmm. so then that'll be used for horde mode. And then that, that'll be built up. Sounds pretty cool. Okay. Um, how has been the performance so far, in your opinion? And do you think it'll get like more challenging to deal with it the more stuff you add? Or do you think it should be pretty stable throughout the whole process? Uh, my intention is certainly to keep it stable. I think I'll probably do some optimization work soon. Um, I think as there's more and more, uh, you know, features and objects and everything active at the, as more and more are added, uh, that the performance obviously scales with that. So mm -hmm. um, then it'll become a process of kind of tuning everything and improving performance in different areas uh, there's one uh, graphics performance issue that I'm aware of but so I want everything to react differently to like snow and rain uh, but right now all of those are running at the same time on the GPU and so ideally we can do something like three where it swaps them out uh, but depending on like we have a snow version uh, when it's time to start fitting in the snow effects and the rain version when it's time to start fitting in the rain effects uh, but Unreal doesn't really have anything like that of the box so I started prototyping uh, some engine changes to support that but uh, I kind of want to push that off as long as possible because mm -hmm. it's um, actually one of the things this past week was uh, updating to Unreal 4.22 and it, it takes a bit of time because of merging all the changes. So ideally, the more we can push off engine changes, the better. Mm -hmm. uh, that way it's easier to stay updated. Uh, the other big engine thing I'm excited about is, at first I thought it was kind of like a marketing gimmick, uh, but their chaos destruction stuff looks kind of promising. So I'm hoping that we can uh, use that for building destruction. Uh, like, oh, really? Yeah, like uh, Battlefield style crash a tank through a house. That's, or That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Do you think it would be easy to like run something like that? Or are you still just like experimenting with that? Uh, the destruction? Yeah. So I like what I need to have a really beefy PC to even like load that you think? Or do you think like anyone would be able to have that turned on? I think so as far as how the destruction under the hood works, I think the performance would certainly be better than three. I think like most objects in three have some degree of destructibility. So for everything in four to have some degree of destructibility, I think is inevitably going to run better than three. Um, okay. But as for the like, physics destruction aspects, that's the sort of thing we'll have to wait and see and see how that performs and tune different things. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't add something that is going to tank performance though. Yeah. Another thing about that. Um, so do you think if like um, most players could run it at, like a really acceptable rate, do you think you would have like some graphic settings turned off? Like every player would have to deal with grass turned on if it didn't really have any impact? Or do you think it would still be like they could turn it off if they wanted it off just to like add more immersion for like most players? I think so when people talk about the different graphic settings and keeping things fair, I think the main ones that come up are shadows and grass. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's something that I've been that's been on my mind basically since starting development as something that's high priority. And so I think it's not something that necessarily has to be solved at the settings level and more on the art level. And so if you look at the grass in four, I've basically decided that all the grass in biomes will have two primary colors. There's a base color that the uh, roots grow out of and then a slightly different color for the tips. Mm -hmm. And so then this lets us blend the grass out uh, very smoothly at distance, like unless you're looking at the horizon, in which case a, lo a lot of the time that'll be blocked by trees and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really see the grass fading in and out. And so then as part of that, uh, I think we'll be able to use some other sneaky tricks to make camouflage more effective. Okay. <clears throat> and so actually a ghillie suit is something I want to work on soon where because the grass can be a lot smarter in these different ways, mm. I think we can make it so that the ghillie suit does some automatic blending into the grass. And right now, like in three, if you see someone with a ghillie suit far away, often the shading will give them away. Yeah. But the way I have things planned, the ghillie suit in four should be able to blend in perfectly at any distance. And so then it'll really be 
becomes a matter of the parts of your body that aren't ghillie covered. So okay. your gun will be what gives you away, not your body. And so then you'll need things like the ghillie netting to put on your gun. So you would actually be able to hide, whereas like if you're a certain distance out, you just get like spotted because the grass doesn't load in or the trees don't load in properly, right? So for entrance three, yeah, the trees would give you away, the grass would give you away, whereas yeah. entrance four, uh, those shouldn't be as big of an issue. I think I'm fairly confident that we can get it so that uh, the individual graphic settings shouldn't matter. Uh, you should be able to blend in regardless. Like even if you have grass disabled, mm -hmm. uh, I think that you should still be able to blend in using yeah. Achilles at any distance. Okay. So about maps, right? Um, do you think you would be leaning more towards like handmade design maps or would you be looking into something that like randomly generates a map with like um, standard locations like some other survival games do? I think actually that's good timing. I was th I've was i been thinking about that a lot recently. Um, I think so. The first few maps will probably be just hand designed because obviously making some procedural generation type systems will take a lot of time. Uh, mm. One thing, I don't remember which game it was. Uh, they're, they're a Canadian developer. They're actually setting the game in Alberta, I think, which is the province I live in, uh, but they're making it so that the bunkers are procedurally generated, mm. and so then that's a lot easier because, like, it's something that is very, uh, like, the hallways follow a grid, and so I think that's a very approachable randomization aspect, and I think that'd be a lot of fun to have bunkers, especially, like, in dead zone type areas where uh, you can have the, the random experience of going into this raid type thing. Mm. Uh, but as a long-term goal, I think that having randomized maps would be really awesome and it's something that I do want to put time into. Okay. I think it would be hard to generate every aspect of the map completely from like complete randomness because uh, there's a lot of difficulties with that like having nice roads and having uh, city streets be logical and placing the buildings and everything uh -huh. but i can definitely imagine some sort of tool that lets you uh, generate like the landscape and then you can map out different sections sort of like maybe like a topographical painting tool where you lay out like here's some towns here's the roads that connect them mm -hmm. and so then rather than having to place those all yourself then it would automate that and so then it'd be really easy to make a lot of different maps using those sort of tools. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my long-term plan around randomization though. So do you mean kind of like how it is when you make a map now you would like you don't have to individually place all the trees you just press uh, bake and then just like randomly spaces them out or do you mean like it would randomly place like certain landmarks around? Uh, randomly placing everything around so oh. uh, sort of like how you're saying it places all those trees uh -huh. uh, so th I think the idea would be that we would have randomization rules for everything uh -huh. and so you would be able to to tune parameters like uh, this town is like in this area, it's this rough shape, it might have this many buildings. Uh, and then when you click generate whatever, uh, then you'd be able to create the entire map and it would try and populate those. That sounds awesome. And so one advantage of using like um, uh, the one, one advantage of using Unreal is that it has some nice features for these kind of things, like uh, Unity for their built-in nav mesh stuff, you had to bake it, and it was very slow and it didn't work at runtime, so Entern uses a uh, navigation plugin that still, it takes a while to bake, whereas Unreal supports a lot of like runtime nav mesh stuff, which mm -hmm. is uh, going to be really useful for uh, roaming zombies and things like that. And so that means, uh, as far as I'm currently aware, I don't think there's anything in the game that has to be static or like uh, can't change during gameplay. So that means that things like trees, you're able to dig them up and move the trees around and maybe really? deforest the entire map. Um, but things like that just mean that all these randomization features will be a lot more possible. That sounds pretty fucking cool. So say there's like a tree in your base, you just dig it up and then it never responds? So. Yeah, uh, I think my plan there is that you'll be able to cut down trees, which will leave stumps. Stumps will grow, but you'll be able to remove stumps and get saplings. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll also get saplings in stores and things. And so then you can plant your own forest or... Uh, you can deforest the entire map, and I think it'll be interesting to see what happens on servers with that sort of mechanic. Uh, P9's in the chat. He's asking how will uh, base building work? I don't think I'd go the freeform route that 3 had. I think um, with the original intention of the free building features in 3 was for vehicles and stuff. But in the, I don't think that was good in the long term. Uh, you know, like the cars that have just walls of barbed wire coming off of yeah, them. Yeah, and then they just. So I think. Through. Yep. <laughs> I think my goal is that you would be able to destroy the map that you started playing on. I don't know how how far out this is, but my dream is that you'll be able to just raise a town to the ground so that there's nothing left, and then build your own up from scratch. 
uh, and uh, car building. I think I want to have more modular components for cars, but not just build whatever you want on them. Yeah. And then uh, more snap together sort of features for buildings, like not just walls and pillars and whatnot, but uh, more aesthetically pleasing building options there. But then also more features that snap together for inside your base. Like if you have the kitchen that you're building together, you can snap all those together. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how well that answers that question. So say there is like a hill that you needed to level out. Do you think you could just like, I don't know, dig around it or fill it in with dirt or is that not like what you had in mind that is one feature that i think is unlikely mm. um being able to dig up the ground i'd like to have that but just too complicated i think um as as far as digging goes there's a lot of complications like um so if we're using a height map terrain uh which is what three and what's built into unreal um you can only go up or down you can't really dig sideways uh, -huh. uh so to have sideways digging we'd need some sort of voxel terrain sort of thing and obviously there's some nice smooth voxel uh type implementations you can find but then there's all kinds of problems with like digging underneath buildings or if there's like a um, part of the map. What's one of the examples? Like in Germany, there's the big military base built into the cliffside. Mm -hmm. uh, so then there's the problems with like digging through the ground into those sort of places. And so I think digging is unlikely to be added. Okay. Hmm. Okay. What about uh, sky bases? Someone asks in gravity overall. Uh, I think, I don't think sky bases will be possible anymore. I think that having some sort of uh, structural support and base collapse feature is required. I think mm -hmm. I don't want to have sky bases anymore. Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I guess what about water bases? Because I guess like you could get like a diving suit, and then that would kind of work, right? Like, do you plan on having those in the game still? I love the idea of water bases, but I think especially in multiplayer, the the real problem with water bases is is having the system for subtracting water. So if you build a, a hut underwater and you put a pressurized door on it and you go inside, you shouldn't have water inside your base. In three, there is water inside your base. So I don't think water bases will be a thing. Okay, makes sense. Um, let's see. And then what about uh, like freeform building, like plates and stuff like that? Do you, I, like that's probably not going to be. Thing, no, right? that's not going to come back. No okay. more free farm stuff. <laughs> oh no, I can't do the play glitch anymore, man. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So I realized like a big focus of two was like customization. Like you just want everything to be customizable to a stomach, like some extent. Um, how like deep do you think that's going to go into like pretty much every item in the game or what? Uh, definitely. I think item customization is one of my top priorities. That's one of the reasons that I rewrote a lot of the item stuff. Mm. I think when I was kind of sitting down thinking about what are the core features of the game, I think items are actually somehow one of the most important features in the game to get mm. right. So much of the game is about collecting items and inventory management. Uh, I'm thinking about three here. And so I want you to be able to completely customize the different things you find, you know, putting together different weapon attachments, finding different variants of weapon attachments, being able to to rename them like uh, was in this most recent demo. Um, I, I mentioned like the ghillie netting sort of thing, being able to paint them. I want you to be able to have like long-term invested items on your server that uh, you don't want to lose. Okay. Um, do you think there would be more of a focus on like crafting your own items and stuff like that rather than just going to a town, looting the town, killing the zombies, that sort of thing? Uh, my thought process there right now is that looting should be one of the core gameplay loops, mm -hmm. but I do want to have more options for crafting makeshift sort of things. One of my main ideas there is similar to how in the Metro series there are the military bullets and the, um, I don't remember what they're called, but the, the bullets that are common. Mm -hmm. I want bullets to be one of the currencies that the NPCs, like maybe not every NPC wants bullets, but I want factory new bullets to be rare. And um, so for things like that, I, I think it'd be cool if you can craft your own bullets and your own like bad versions of things, uh -huh. but the rarest versions are the like, factory like, new ones. You'd have to like go out and find like the really good stuff. Yeah. 
Okay, so I saw the partnership with uh, Tencent and how they're having like their own version of Unturned. Um, so once you make Unturned 2, do you think like you'll still maintain 3.0 or do you think Tencent would just take over 3.0? Uh, Tencent is definitely not taking over the Canadian version. Um, I can't imagine ever releasing control of Unturned on PC. Uh, so the scope of that is purely they're working on a better version for China. Okay. And so their goals there are, I think, they're doing some like custom content and they're bringing it to their platform uh, which is called Wii Game I believe uh -huh. and uh, they're doing translations like I've seen some screenshots of their version and uh, everything's in Mandarin or simplified uh -huh. Chinese and uh, so yeah it, it's not going to apply to so, Unturned Nancy. So it's just like their version right? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Have you had any thoughts about rating or anything like that so far, or is that still way too far out? Uh, what do you have in mind around that? Like thoughts around how the different mechanics will affect rating, or? Um, I mean, I guess. I'm just wondering if it'll be like open ended, like say, like how it is now is like you have to get a certain tier, like weapon or something to break into a base. Like, is it going to stay that way or is it going to be where, say, if you wanted to, you could get an axe and just hatch it down like a wood wall for like X amount of time or whatever? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I think there are a lot of different features and mechanics that will affect writing, and so the like strict tiers won't be as necessary. I think that similar to how there will be the different tiers of bullets, there will be, rather than having certain guns that do damage to bases, Mm -hmm. uh, there might be certain uh, types of bullets that do damage to bases. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, to incentivize looting, maybe you go and find the military factory-made armor-piercing bullets. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can craft your own, but it's difficult. Uh, so that way it's still not like just anyone can spawn and pick up a gun and go destroy your hours of work. Yeah. But it's a little bit less like, oh, we got to find this one gun that can do it. Yeah. Um, and three, I would like to have more tiers of base materials. Mm -hmm. But one limiting factor there is that it, it, the way they're all set up, it's not like I can just add like bricks or something. And then all of a sudden there's the brick versions of everything. It's kind of poorly designed in that you have to go add like uh, stairs made of bricks, wall made of bricks, floor made of bricks. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of a nightmare. And so definitely in four, I intend to make it more... Uh, straightforward to add new materials and then they can all have different properties and uh, it'll be a more multi-tiered upgrade path and also i think that some of the new features that steer away from the whole like magical locking groups features mm -hmm. will i think affect writing so uh, with things like keys and code locks I think that'll add a new element of espionage to writing, mm. where if you can like steal the key or you can get someone on the inside who knows the code, yeah. then they can leak the code and you can sneak in. Okay. Do you think you'll make it so where, because um, right now you can pretty much just log off and take all your gear with you, right? Do you think you'll make like a system so like when you log off, it's not like you just evaporate, like you'll just be sleeping on the ground or? I'm not really a fan of the sleepers features that are in some of these survival games. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing that definitely won't be coming back is the multi-character storage that exists in 3. Mm -hmm. And actually, I do intend to add an option soon where you can turn that off on your server. Okay. Um, I think that one thing that might help with that is if there's some sort of uh, penalty for logging off in combat with your inventory in your base. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that be, but maybe like teleporting you to a nearby point rather than letting you just log back into the fight. Uh, there's definitely going to have to be some discussion about that. I think it's hard to say now what the rating meta is going to be and the whole logging off with items, but yeah. I definitely want to be more active in preventing that sort of thing. Okay. So you wouldn't be able to just like take all your best stuff and just know that it's safe? Or do you think it would still be somewhat like that, but there would be a penalty for doing so? Um, I know that kind of factors into some other features, like if there's... So for example, one thing that's not done yet, but that I want to work on soon is that cars will... So when the server starts up, it spawns the cars, then those cars spawn key items that are associated with that car. And okay. so then you have to get that car key to unlock and use the car. Mm -hmm. uh, that should be in the next Friday's update. Uh, and so then if there's only a fixed number of this key, then what happens if a new player takes the key and logs out with it? Uh -huh. And so I'm not sure if that means that there needs to be like a 
crate left where they logged off or I'm not sure you're right there needs to be something done about that I don't know what that is sleepers maybe sleepers is the is what needs to be added mm -hmm. so someone can't just take everything and then log off and there's just nothing in the server like all the car like normally how it is is like someone will go around take all the cars lock them and then there's just a whole bunch of locked cars you can't use you'd have to blow them up so they respawn so I'm not sure like how to fix that exactly but what if there was like uh every car has its own unique key something like that so like you can't just I don't know use the same one for every car. Yeah, that so that, that is how it will work is that each car will spawn a key that's tied to that car. Maybe mm -hmm. two maybe one or two per car spawned. Mm -hmm. Uh so you'll need one of those keys to use that car. So say say you kill that player that has the key, would you just be able to take it off their body and then take their car? Yeah. Oh, well that sounds cool. But then like you're saying there is the problem of what happens if they log off or um mm -hmm. That's that's something I haven't given enough thought. You're right. Okay. Uh, oh. We'll have to have a. Actually, I bet after this there'll be a post on the forum talking yeah. about this. Yeah, I was looking through the forums. There's a lot of like cool ideas in there. So if anyone. Oh yeah, I've got so many links saved. Uh, <laughs> there's I've got years of work ahead of me to implement all these things. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think there will be like a, a maintenance system to the base? So it's like how it is now is like you just build it and then it's good forever, pretty much. Or on some servers it's a little bit different. But do you think you'd have to manually like go out and get materials to keep your base like stable or is that something you're not really looking into i think that's something rust did recently is you have to have i guess you've i saw you made some rust videos recently is that how it works you have to put yeah. items into a crate to keep your base maintained so it's like there's a tool cupboard and if say like you make an all metal base you'd have to go get metal fragments to like keep it stable I think that's a nice way of solving it, and I can definitely see adding something like that. Because mm -hmm. it would keep people more like active and invested in their base. Mm -hmm. um, someone, Dona in the stream, is asking about uh, gun balance and how that's going to work for on turn two. As to, do you think they meant like how the different guns compare, or...? Um... I think he means so like how it is now is like all the game or all the guns are kind of like similar like they aren't too different um how they're going to like stack up and like what's going to make it better to use x gun than another one okay i think in an ideal world there would only be as many different guns as there are unique mechanics for each different gun mm -hmm. um so maybe there's the pistol that's balanced with like high damage but low rate of fire and then like the common pistol that has high rate of fire but low damage mm -hmm. and i think though that everyone likes to have more gun content everyone likes to have a big weapon collection yeah so i think one thing i've kind of been considering is having sort of weapon stats profiles so like maybe several assault rifles share the same profile of they have identical stats but they all have different appearances and uh, then there's also some room for balance between different weapons accepting different attachments mm -hmm. it is kind of i think a different a difficult balance between having a lot of different items so that it feels like there's variety and giving each item a unique purpose mm -hmm. um he says uh that he feels most of the guns just have uh too easy like recoil so like you pretty much how it is now you just press h and then like you're pretty much good to go right um do you think it'll be a lot different for unturned two whereas like you couldn't just lay down in third person and then it would be like no recoil essentially uh right yep i think one let's see definitely unique recoil patterns for each weapon mm -hmm. the way that will work is there's a recoil pattern asset that defines which shot in the burst will go in different directions like counter strike okay so it wouldn't and be just like oh if you hold down you'll hit every shot yeah okay. definitely not like that i think even with attachments i want you'd have to do some amount of recoil control okay um as for just lying down, I want it to be that the bipods, you don't just have to go prone, you have to mount them to something. Okay. And so that way there's some setup time. Basically like every other game with bipods, I think yeah. Unturned's one of the few that has this weird magic bipod. Yeah. <laughs> And do you think you'll have like a like what 3.0 has is like a the gold feature where if you want to you can support you in the game itself? Uh, I have kind of mixed feelings on that. I I think it, it makes me kind of uncomfortable when players view the gold upgrade as a donation. I don't want it to feel like a donation, I want it to be something that you feel is valuable to purchase. Mm -hmm. And so not only do I want your benefits from 3 to carry over into 4, uh, but if I for anything that is sold in 4, I want you to... I mean, ideally, you like unturned development and you want to support development, yeah. uh, but I not also as, want it to be something that you want to buy. Not as like, oh, I'm going to give Nelson a crisp $5. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, have you considered like the features that would come with it if you decided to do another gold pass? Or since like you, you decided like cosmetics weren't really going to be a big thing in, on turn two, right? So that wouldn't really be a thing for gold members, right? Yeah. So I've that's kind of been on, been on the back of my mind. Uh, there's a few different things I, I I think would be good options, like decorating your in-game profile. Uh, which, well, that sounds kind of silly, but uh, like when you see your name, like you can maybe change the color of your name. Okay. And and like, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, then I've been thinking a lot about the dedicated servers, official servers, or like rent a server sort of thing. And so there'd be some sort of benefit with that. Um, so maybe, maybe like a priority. Oh, sorry. So maybe if like, if you buy gold, you get uh, like better access to official servers, do you think? Or would it not uh, be to those? I was ones? thinking sort of that to get access to official servers, you might need the premium pass. Uh, okay. The other route, which I think might be more sustainable in the long run, is to have a rent a server program where I think I think this is a lot longer out because I would need to learn a lot about the infrastructure behind this sort of thing. But having a rent a server program where you can pitch in through Steam, so it's not like one person is responsible for the subscription, but instead uh, you can have like a, a page as part of the server where you can choose to contribute to a server's hosting costs. Mm -hmm. And that might not even be just limited to official servers. That might be something that uh, community servers can use too. So say the server hoster. They're not doing an official server they just want to do their own they would be able to do like a if they want to contribute they can but it's not required or along what lines would that be i was thinking sort of that uh as i understand it there's a lot of community servers in three where players get perks by contributing to the server's hosting costs mm. and i mean i know there's lots of people who make a profit from that and that's their business uh but being able to support that more directly through the game itself like um there's just a built-in menu as part of the game menu where you can choose to support the server hoster. Uh, it's not something I've given a lot of thought, but I think that could be helpful. Okay. But it's not like something that would be required though, right? No, no. Okay. Um, let's see. People are asking if the um, 3.0 gold will carry over to 4.0 for on turn 2. Uh, certainly in some regard. I think it's not like the th 4 benefits are going to be identical to 3, but it's very important to me that... If you bought gold in 2013, you're still going to be getting benefits from it in 2020. Anything that you purchase should have long-term value, and I really appreciate your long-term support. Mm -hmm. Okay, so character customization, do you think that will still be like a thing in Unturned 2 or no? Definitely in some regard. I think that I don't want to bring back the skin color options. I so think... you can't just turn your skin color green and then, ooh, I'm now the grass. <laughs> exactly. That's definitely not coming back. I think that I'll either have it's that everyone has yellow skin or maybe an option of yellow skin or like human skin colors. Okay. Uh, but then you'll also have customization of things like your hair and your hairstyle, the colors, your face expressions and stuff. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you have anything that you've been working on that you would like to share with the, the stream or would you just send uh, think, them to the dev vlog? I think everything's pretty much cut up. Uh, like what's on the roadmap Trello is basically what I'm working on. Uh, this past week was mostly kind of fixed stuff related to the last dev vlog and some kind of silly things like uh, a bunch of maps accidentally got included in the last version that shouldn't have been. So I ended up spending like eight hours working on that, which was kind of dumb. Uh, I ended up having to modify the engine to uh, better use some custom assets that 4 uses for map management. And so it was things like that this week. Then next week is going to be, or like what I'm working on this weekend, is vehicles. Uh, I did some work on the modeling tools this morning. And then the rest of this week is going to be, well, probably the main thing there is just touching up all the animations for the character model for the vehicle. And then I'll be working on the guns. Okay. Um, people are asking if the skins are going to transfer over, but to my understanding, there isn't going to be any skins. Um, let's see. I think one thing I was thinking about, like, I, I definitely want you, like I mentioned, I want you to be able to feel like the things that you purchased in Unturn in the past still have value in Unturn 2. Mm. And so while the skins might not transfer over directly, I've been thinking about a few different ways that maybe we could, uh, like have a rewards program for like if you had items in three, you get some benefit in four. Okay. I'm not completely sure what that would be yet, but it's I definitely 
the worst thing I think is if you regret your purchase. If you regret your purchase, I'm very sorry, and I want to do everything I can to make that better. Um. Okay. So, what do you think the next um game uh, gameplay element you're going to be working on it is now? Since like we already did the vehicle beta, there was already the weapon beta. Are you going to continue working on those, or are you going to focus on something else, like maybe AI or something like that? Uh, I think AI is probably a safe bet. I think that. Let's see. So on the roadmap right now, the next thing that'll probably be an update of its own is corpse interaction, where like being able to properly loot other people's bodies. Um, but I think the next like interesting update will be either adding horde mode and zombies with that, or a map that's more focused on like looting and how the looting mechanics play together with combat. And so maybe imagine something like Escape from Tarkov's factory level, uh -huh. where you have people like roaming the factory and shooting each other, picking up all the items and, and looting everything. Uh, so I can definitely see a test map like that being added. Okay. Do you think something like that would be public in the coming months or whatever? Or do you think that would still be kind of more exclusive for the time being? Uh, that would be part of the closed beta updates like that. I, I think you have a key for that. So anyone who has a key right now. Uh, and by that point, I think that would probably be at the point that the invites are starting to roll out to longtime players. Mm -hmm. And then I think one benefit of doing a map like that and, and being able to put that thing together is then focusing on polishing everything up uh, so that more players can play. Like there's some things that, that need some work right now, like uh, the controller support has kind of gone neglected for a bit now. Uh, mm -hmm. So bringing everything up to snuff and then being able to go and gradually add more and more features. Okay, so with the controller support, are you do you have any plans to go to console or is it still going to be mainly PC? Uh, PC is my entire focus. Um, okay. So it's the, just going to be for like um, ease of access? Yeah, ease of access. And I think you need controllers to be able to play split screen. Oh, okay. And uh, split screen is important to me. I think there's there's always been tons of requests for controller support in 3. I get lots of emails all the time from people asking for controller support. And so it's something that is that has to be planned for from the start. I think it's important to take some time to go and uh, really polish that up before adding more and more features, because otherwise it's just going to be harder and harder to support. So say you wanted to just play like some horde mode with like your friend or family or whatever, you would just be able to plug in a controller and then you'd be good to go with split screen, right? Yep, uh, definitely. I think right now that somewhat works. Like if you plug in a controller right now, there is a button that adds the split screen player and some features work, but not all of them. Okay. Uh, chat's asking if you think we'll, uh, split screen will be laggy or if it would be just pretty normal overall. Uh, I think that entirely depends on your computer and your performance settings. Mm -hmm. So split screen does require rendering the game twice, uh, one for each player's perspective. Yeah. And so there may be some optimizations when you're close together and you have the same objects loaded and everything, but... It's more so just like on their end? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, someone asked if you are considering VR support. Uh, I doubt it. I think at one point I did that VR stuff for three, but I think that was a poor idea and a poor decision on my part. I don't think Unturned is not a VR game, so I'm yeah. not going to do VR. <laughs> Maybe an Unturned 5. <laughs> Maybe. Um, let's see. Um, they're asking about the workshop. Um, so it's still going to be like a big part for Unturned 2 though, right? So like if someone makes a map, they can just download off the workshop and then they can host their server or items or this, that. Definitely. Gonna, workshop uh, is very important to me. And uh, it will it should be a lot smoother too. Like you'll be able to see in-game which things you're subscribed to. When you're joining servers, you can see the list of things that it will download and quality of life features to make the workshop easier to use. Okay. Um, as far as vehicles, do you think like you're still going to have like uh, military vehicle spawns or there's like tanks and jets and stuff like that? Or would it be more like civilian vehicles and that sort of deal? So it's not like uh, overpowered in that sense? I, I know this is going to be controversial, but I do intend to add military vehicles and I'm actually looking forward to it. I think it'll be a lot of fun to work on. <laughs> But I think more work needs to be put into balancing them and making it more of a trade-off. Like the tank in 3 is basically a multi-terrain vehicle that drives perfectly fast and, or I, what I mean by that is it drives at a medium speed. Mm -hmm. And so I think it needs more things like uh, the turret 
should turn slowly. Uh, there needs to be weak points. You need to be able to destroy the treads. There needs to be more work required to maintain the tank. Uh, so I think that will balance it out more. So not like you just shoot a rocket at the tank and the whole thing blows up. You'd have to like, I don't know, shoot a fuel tank or something like that with something strong enough, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I remember playing a game Valkyria Chronicles, I think, on the PlayStation 3, where like there's a glowing blue engine on the back of the tank. And so then the tank has to try and keep itself turned away from enemies. But if you're if you can flank it, then it's a lot easier to take out the tank. Okay. Um. Do you think that same system of like uh, combat or whatever would be like in just normal player versus player stuff, or do you think that would be too overcomplicated? Um. Sorry, I'm not sure I understood what you mean. Could you repeat that? So, say you got like shot in the leg. Like, would that do significantly less damage than like you get shot in the chest, or would it be uh, even more specific than that? Like, if you hit a certain like spot on the leg, like you hit an artery or something, <laughs> or would it just be <laughs> like something much more simple? Uh, I don't like those kind of mechanics. I think that for things like hitting lungs or hitting arteries, uh, that turns out to be more just luck than it uh -huh. is skill. I think headshots so, are kind of in the middle gray area of that. I think that critical hit points are an interesting boss mechanic. So I mm -hmm. think I can imagine like more powerful enemies that have critical hit points or in the case of the tank, uh, boss vehicles having critical hit points. But I think I might even go as far as evening out the player body damage in general. And I want to increase the importance of your gear and how you outfit your gear, like mm -hmm. attaching armor plating to your vest and having different tiers of armor plating rather than things like hitting like different spots. specific so, spots. So it'd be less on like where you hit on the body. It'd be more what kind of protection you have, like if you have a military vest versus a police vest, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, even down to the point that Maybe a military vest and police vest are similar stats-wise, but a military vest has more utility slots, and okay. it would then be down to, do you have high-quality uh, metal plates in there, and are they damaged or not? And for example, maybe, I I'll have to research this more, but if you were hit by a fragmentation grenade, maybe that breaks the plates, and so you need to replace them. Or if they get shot a certain amount, you need to replace them. Okay. So that goes with the customization thing where it's like, oh, if only this part of the vest got hit. I'll just replace that singular plate. I wouldn't have to scrap the whole vest, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, would it be different in the sense of like how it is now is like you get, I don't know, maybe one shot, maybe two more shots of damage for the vest or would it be like a significant thing to get a vest and a helmet? I feel like that's really hard balance. I think with these sorts of things, there's... The combating, like, so player has normal ammo and then they can kill the other player in a few shots. So the other player gets medium tier armor and they can soak up like five or six more shots. And then the other player goes for headshots. And so then they get a helmet that can soak up a few headshots. And mm -hmm. then the other player gets armor piercing bullets. And so then they can kill them again. So then they have to get higher tier armor and then they end up with higher tier bullets. So I think it's there's kind of escalating tiers here that there has to be a balance between um like is it possible to get armor piercing bullets for snipers that one hit kill helmeted high tier helmets like i don't know i think that's the sort of thing that it's hard to say now it, it'll have to we'll have to see what the balance is like and what the community thinks okay that makes sense um someone asks if the zombie ai will be greatly improved uh i certainly hope it improves <laughs> i think <laughs> One major limiting factor there is whether I can find smart ways to make the zombies smarter, but mm -hmm. I, I have no doubt that they will be smarter than they are in 3. Okay. So I think there's a few things that go into that, like in horde mode the zombies only have to run straight at you, so that's easy, but for zombies in the open world, uh, things like roaming will make them more challenging. Uh, I want to make it so that they can climb so that you can't cheese them standing on a roof. <laughs> and <Okay. laughs> I think... There will be some other aspects of that, like making it set sneaking is more involved and making it set you can tell when a zombie is going to turn so that you know you have to take cover or it'll spot you. Um, so I think it's not just about making the AI do more things, it's about making the AI more predictable in a sense. Okay. So it's not like you would just be able to crawl like right next to them and be like, oh, no one here. Like they would actually spot you if like you're in their sight or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some silly situations in 3 and as for how close you can get. Uh, I think part of that in 3 is since you have to be able to sneak up behind them to get those stun lock hits on their head. Mm -hmm. But definitely, I don't really want it to be like that. Okay. 
Um, are you still going to keep the concept of having like multiple different types of zombies, or are they all just going to be sort of like a generic one? I think that's one of the things that's going to set Unturn 2 apart significantly from 1, is I am not even sure how much I want to take it away from zombies. I think there definitely will be like the classic Unturned zombies, but I'm also thinking about things like uh, the possessed players once you get killed, uh, different kinds of mutants that like hang from the ceiling. Mm. Uh, just to make it like so, more unique? Uh, but to make it more unique and to give the looting more variety so that you have more enemy types to deal with. And okay. so I think, I feel to some degree like you can only go so far with zombies and zombies are kind of played out. So I think we might have to kind of expand the infection to more than just uh, more than just humans. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, everyone's saying, I love you, Nelson. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Um, okay, someone asks how the experience and level up system will work. Mm, I think it'll probably be a hybrid of different systems. I like the idea of when you do something, you get better at it. Like your character, both in, in multiple different ways, you mechanically as a human get better at controlling the game with things like recoil patterns. Uh, oh. So steering away from like the magical zero recoil skill. Uh, but then also different mechanics that help you, that as, that as you repeat things, your character gets better at doing that thing. Uh, this is something Escape from Tarkov is really good at, that maybe you can't tell how many bullets are in a magazine, but as your character gets more experienced, you can more accurately guess the bullets in the magazine. Okay. Uh, and then inevitably different abilities that you unlock. I love Path of Exile's skill tree. I think I like it would be amazing if Unturned 2 had a skill tree as big as Path of Exile's. <laughs> so I kind of want to do everything, uh, if possible. Okay, but it wouldn't just be like, a, say you chop down a tree and then you put a skill into shooting somehow, though, right? It'd be a lot more in-depth. So like you'd actually have to practice shooting to get shooting skills? Yeah, I'm not sure if that would like be different types of experience points that you invest in different things, but... Um... The getting experience from a tree and putting into shooting is something I don't want to bring back. Okay. Um, let's see. Someone's asking about server plugins. Like, will there still be kits and TPA servers, or is it going to start off more as like a vanilla experience and then it'll change over time? I think it's inevitable that some modders will make TPA and kits plugins. Mm -hmm. They might even be some server options for that in the vanilla game, but. I think ideally the survival game is <clears throat> enough fun that players want more vanilla servers. They'll choose to actually do that than just the sandbox server. Yep, I think I think sandbox servers are inevitable, and I think they can be a lot of fun. Uh, but I want to do my best to make it so that you don't you want to play survival. To. <laughs> Okay. Um, someone else asks about map size. Are you trying to do like a certain like average size or will it just be depending on what fits that map? I think <clears throat> for the first main official map, I want to start off with a small area and then gradually expand it uh, with new biomes and new locations. Okay. Uh, there is kind of a hard cap where floating point accuracy decreases, where you start to notice jitter in objects like they'll they'll start to flicker around a little bit uh, and that's just inherent with if you don't do uh, shifting back towards the world origin and so entering won't do that so the biggest map size is realistically eight by eight kilometers i would guess but i think i've seen that some people like do 20 by 20 in unreal i think it depends how much imprecision you're willing to compromise with but i guess we might see Maybe, maybe Epic will work on that and roll something out that kind of addresses that under the hood. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's unlikely. Uh, they do actually have a feature that sort of does that. Um, well, it, it does do that, but in multiplayer, you're going to run into problems. Uh, I, I guess since there are Unreal maps that are 20 by 20, that's a f effective max size to say for now. Um, just curious, how big is like Russia in like terms of actual like kilometers? Like, how how would Russia compare to? like the maps you're planning on making for Unturned 2? So Russia is four by four kilometers. Really? Damn, okay. So and you could make them huge if you wanted to in Unreal. Actually, I, I might be wrong. Let me... <clears throat> Russia might actually be eight by eight. I, I can't oh. believe I don't remember. Uh, Sorry. But uh, one nice thing is you'll be able to expand the map in different directions as you're making it, uh, depending on what you, where you want to go with it. Okay. And I think I don't want to make a big map just for the sake of making a big map. Yeah. Uh, 
I think there's kind of a careful balance between being on foot and being able to wander between locations and have fun. Yeah, so it's and, not like you're just walking for 12 hours to try and get to spot. Yeah, I definitely don't want walking for 12 hours, but I also want uh, I, w- I want vehicles to be important. Like, mm. you sh- it, it should be worth yeah. taking your car across the map. Will Unturned be on the Epic Game Store, says Cosmic? Or will it still be on Steam? Uh, still Steam. I think there was some confusion at one point because I mentioned that the mod tools will be on the Epic Game Launcher. Mm. And the reason for that is that the Unreal License Agreement requires that the mod tools are only available through their launcher. Mm. Uh, it is. I, I want to ask them about that soon. I might su- submit a ticket to ask for permission to maybe at least have a closed private version through Steam of the mod tools, mm. uh, which would allow us to start getting the mod tools out earlier. Um, I think the problem is I can't put the mod tools out until the game is public, and so mm. that's going to end up delaying the mod tools for a while, so I am hopeful that we'll be able to get permission. Um, but the game, I, I, I like Steam, I think Steam is better from a customer's perspective, Hell yeah. and so I, I will continue to do everything through Steam for the foreseeable future. Okay. Um, how do you feel like uh, Unturned 2 has improved over like the past um, year and a half since like the first devlog has been released? Uh, wow, it's weird thinking it's been so long already. I definitely thought I would have more playable by now. I think I, I'm glad that it's taken so much time, uh, or that I've taken so much time to make sure we're doing things right. Mm-hmm. I Rather think... than just rushing it, just to have yeah, something think... out. Mm-hmm. I think, so thinking back, Unturned 3 released the first beta of like three months into development. And I'd also done a lot of under the hood, like the networking and the editor. Uh, but for 4, I'm glad to have taken the time to uh, learn more about animation, um, try and learn more about Unreal and what the best way to do things in Unreal is. Mm. And so I think thinking back to the first versions, um, I was doing a lot more stuff manually then, whereas now I've made a lot of tools to make everything faster. Uh, the first version of items, I think if I had released the beta a year ago, I would have had to stick with the way items were written then. And I think that would have been a mistake because the new item design is far superior. Um, the new item design is worse performance wise, but I, I think it'll be a lot better in the long run. And so there's a lot of different systems like that that I think have matured over the last year. And uh, because because it's taken en- enough time for that, we'll be a lot better off in the long run. Okay. Um, do you feel like um, learning these tools over such like a long time has made it so it's just like easy to do like things faster now? Like if it would have t- like taken you a month before, like you could do it in like, I don't know, two weeks in that sense? Or is it still like a learning process to do new things? Uh, I think... <clears throat> Doing new things is always uh, interesting learning. I think uh, as far as like moving initially from Unity to Unreal, I think things were a lot easier from past experience with Unity and other game engines and uh, of course programming in other languages. Uh, but I think the big time difference between starting on 4 and now is back then uh, I was using Blender and I still love Blender, and um, but I didn't I hadn't made any custom tools for Blender at that point. So I was manually going and like export LOD0, export LOD1, export LOD2, and then Unreal go click import LOD0, import LOD1. And it's like painful thinking of that. So in that time, I ended up making a whole bunch of custom tools for Maya, which have sped that sort of thing up a lot, where now it's just like, I can go, like I think the blast lane and firing range props took like two hours. It was just like, go quickly make this, click export, boom, it's in the <laughs> game, it's ready to go. Nice. So there's so many tools like that now. Um, like actually one tool I did this morning is there's two separate meshes for each item that you can equip. There's a static one, and an animated one. Mm. And so all the attachment points for things like scopes have to be configured for each. So a year ago, it was like, go into the uh, the editor and move all the attachment points around and then one by one copy the values to the other one. Whereas then today, this morning, I made a tool that will just automatically export those from Maya. So in Maya, I just go do it once and then in game, it updates automatically, they're both synced. It's so things like that. I don't know, I kind of went off on tangent there, but life is better now. <laughs> nice. Um, so how do you feel the next uh, coming months are going to be as terms of like development? Like, should it be a lot quicker than it used to be? Or is it still going to be like challenging for some aspects? I think now that a lot more of the behind the scenes sort of things are done, I think there'll be a lot more visible progress. And I don't think there's any critical issues in three right now. I think that took a lot of time over the last year. Like, it wasn't 
it's not like I've been working on four for a year straight. It's like work on three for a week, work on four for a week. And there's a lot of mental, um, I, I don't know what the word is, but like swapping between the two games and like the entirely different code bases, the entirely different tools. It like takes a day to get used to it. So I think that slowed things down a lot, going back and forth a lot. So I think now that my focus is on four, I'm going to be working on four each week for the foreseeable future and working on public updates that are going to be like able to have update notes and uh, <clears throat> working on feedback. I think there's going to be a lot more visible progress and it's going to feel a lot more like things are getting done. Like progress is happening? Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. Someone asks if you would stream development, but I don't, I don't really think that's too likely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have streamed development in the past. I mean, like ages ago. I think the last time I streamed development was 2015, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple problems with streaming development, though. Uh, one being that when I have streamed development in the past and I get to a point where I'm thinking about something or maybe I look something up, then people can, or maybe people who just tuned in can get a poor impression of Untrans development. Like I remember seeing a thread on the game subreddit where someone was talking in the discussions about Untrans development and that they looked up and that the developers like this kid who doesn't know what he's doing, he was just Googling things. Yeah. And it's like, maybe I did that for a few minutes, but so, I, I don't want to have those kind of misconceptions as you'd, well as... You'd rather be um, able to do something that's like polished and then like shows people what they need to know. And then you get back to your own thing, right? Yeah, that is nice. Let's see. Um, okay, someone asks if there will be any new implementations to stop hackers for Unturned 2. Um, I think... So there's kind of two layers of anti-cheat. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one that's most important is to do as much as possible on the server. And so that means like if someone says, I just picked up a grizzly sniper with 100 bullets, then mm -hmm. the server says, no, you didn't. That isn't <laughs> even possible. So the server needs to be authoritative for everything. And I think 3 is pretty good about this. Like um, there's a few things that aren't authoritative in 3, like car physics. Um, and so I think the room for improvement there is just to bring the last few things over to server side. Uh, the movement is a lot better in 4 as far as uh, being um, deterministic. And as of the moment, the cars are um, driven by a server side physics, which might end up having to change, unfortunately, because uh, d depending on what the performance is like. Uh, if you have like 200 milliseconds ping and you're mispredicting the car's uh, physics, it sucks. It feels yeah. horrible. Actually, if you look at some gameplay, the vehicle demo, there's a few times when you'll like see a car <laughs> shoot off a ramp and go into space. Yeah. And then like a second later, it teleports next to you. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are cases like, where the server, sorry? It's going like full speed backwards somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was clips like that, right? <laughs> and so it's those things that have room to improve in 4 as far as anti-cheat on the server side. Uh, and then the other side is the client side anti-cheat. Mm -hmm. And so client-side anti-cheat is always going to be bypassed, and so it's a constant fight between whoever's maintained the client-side anti-cheat and the cheaters. Yeah. And so I'm pretty happy with BattleEye. I think um, I think the problem with 3 and BattleEye is that it can't do as much as it can for other games because Unturned is the only BattleEye game using C Sharp. Mm -hmm. And so there's some limitations that they've worked on for C++ games that Unturned can't use because it's C-sharp. And so since Unturned 2 is in Unreal, it's C++, it's a lot harder to get Unturned 2's code and just makes them, like, it's easy to make Unturned 3 uh, cheats because it's C-sharp and you can just take the game code and just modify it a little bit. Mm -hmm. That won't be possible in, in 2. So it's going to be a lot harder to make cheats for 2, as well as BattleEye will be able to better protect it. Not to mention that uh, Fortnite uses BattleEye and Easy Anti-Cheat. I can't believe it uses both, but uh, that means Epic's investing tons of money in BattleEye and they're incentivized to like do a really good job protecting... So make it so nobody can even cheat. Yeah, so I think chances are Unturned 2 will use BattleEye and that should be... I think BattleEye in Unturned 2 will be more effective than it is in Unturned 1. Okay, so it should be a lot more trackable, whereas BattleEye can say, oh, you just moved 300 meters in a second, you're gone. Like, so in those terms, it should be a lot better. 
Uh, just to clarify that sort of thing, so the moving 300 meters in a second, that's the sort of thing that the server, the server side code, the gameplay code can be deterministic about, and mm -hmm. it's it's not possible to speed hack. Like, you can't move faster than you should be able to because that stuff's done on the server. Uh, what BattleEye does is it will, um, for example, if it detects that you've modified your files, it'll kick you from the server. Um, it, it does things on your local computer, like if something on your local computer is off, it can give you a warning about it and kick you, or if it detects that you're using a known and cheat it can ban you for that uh, so battle eye is focused on client side things whereas uh moving fast is something that we can detect on the server and just prevent from happening okay so either way you should be like good to go right like it should be a lot harder to cheat on, on turn two yeah okay. definitely people are asking if there's going to be a lot more pve stuff um rather than just um like going to kill zombies or building a base like if there would be more events if that's if that's the right term um i think as part of like deepening the different mechanics, there will be more depth to the PvE events in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the idea of different like world events that happen maybe as a result of NPCs or like NPC bandits. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to have more uh, like random events, like we were talking earlier about random bunkers. Yeah. Uh, one feature I kind of pushed about on the roadmap was the excursions feature, which is something I want to work on long term. The idea being something like Stranger Things, the Upside Down, where you go to this alternate realm to do a PVE event and get some rare items. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think there'll be more PvE stuff to do. Sounds cool. Um, let's see. Will there be more gestures? <laughs> sorry. It probably. Sorry, I was just thinking. Uh, I think there will be. I, I think. Can I do the of... Fortnite dance and unturn you? <laughs> I do. I do kind of like the idea of having dances and emotes as a um, like a cosmetic sort of thing that. You could purchase i think there's kind of a, a line there between i don't want it, anything useful to be something you have to purchase like being able to wave and being able to point and things like that should just be something that anyone can do um that's kind of a decision i made in three not to do that because i wanted everything to be um things that everyone can perform mm -hmm. but in general i think there'll be more character actions okay people are saying no Nelson, no fortnite dance please <laughs> Will you be able to knock someone's gun out of their hands? So I guess people are just like curious if there's going to be like a lot more like new mechanics and stuff like that in terms of like so it won't be as simple as just like get gun, shoot gun, that sort of thing. Um, I've kind of been thinking about different ways to balance the guns in that regard, like with features like weapon jamming. Um, mm -hmm. And so then certain weapons are more likely to jam than others and also based on maintenance. But I don't think I'd go so far as knocking guns out of players' yeah. hands. I think that'd be frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, Man, I dropped my gun again. <laughs> I think the combat depth is less likely to come from features like that, and instead more from uh, different ways of fighting, like the different types of melee weapons, expanding that from just weak and strong attacks into um, like blocking and throwing mm -hmm. and... Do you think there's any way, like, melee could be improved? So, like, whenever I get in a melee fight, like, it, it kind of just feels, like, clumsy because, like, how the characters move. Like, do you think it would be more, um, I don't know what the term is. How do you think it'll be in Unturned 2? Um, so I think the problem with 3's melee combat is that it's basically just a short-range bullet. It yeah. is... <laughs> It doesn't actually do a sweep or anything to hit things. And so I think in 4, as soon as uh, the melee is more physical and like if you're doing a left to right slash, then you'll hit anything in that slash radius or rather than, range, whatever. Rather than you have to hit like a certain hitbox for a certain second, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as soon as there's all that extra leniency, I think the melee fights will work, will be a lot less clumsy. So it'll be like an actual viable option. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we do a few more questions and then... Yep, um, and then we'll wrap it up. I mean, I, all of these questions like seem pretty similar. So, I mean, I, I think it's fine just to like wrap up now. If if there's anything you'd like to say like to wrap things up and then just go from there, I guess. Um, I guess thanks for, thanks for tuning in and asking questions. I'm very grateful and happy that there's uh, so many of you who are interested in entering too. And I hope I can make it a good game. Hell yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your day to come join us and answer some questions. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, maybe another nine months we can do another 
another follow-up. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me on again. And yeah, no hopefully in nine months we're playing a public version and we've got some of these features in. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later, man. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Very cool. That about wraps up the interview. I doubt anyone's here, but if you are, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel, consider subscribing. And if you want to support even more than that, you can consider being a channel member. You get a whole bunch of fancy perks with it, along with your name on the end credit screen that you'll see right about now. <laughs>